Hello class, this is a tutorial on how to install your Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.3 server for the first time in your VMware ES6i hypervisor. So you've already connected at this point through the Cisco AnyConnect VPN into the lab, and we've entered the IP address of our ES6i hypervisor in the browser navigational window up here where the URL would go. And so I have the login page. That's where we're at now. I'll go ahead and log in with my student in Tech 220 Bang and hit login. This is pretty much what you'll see. Uh, we went over this in class earlier this week. You'll see in the upper right corner some stats on your CPU memory and storage. You'll notice my memory is quite high. I have a virtual machine that I could turn off here, this Windows 10 client, so I'm going to go ahead and select that client, and I'll just go ahead and suspend it. You don't have to do this, but if you're not using your Windows 10 client, it's a good idea to suspend it so you have more resources on your ESXi server to work with. It makes things faster. Okay, that's suspended. Notice when I wipe back, I can just click on the play button or I can um, uh, do it through the actions menu. So our next step is we're going to click create, register a VM, create a new VM. We have to give it a name. I'll call this server one. And this is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.3. And then I'll go ahead and put in the drop downs here that it is Linux, Red Hat, Linux 8, just like that. So it asks where I want to store it. Do not choose the ISO library, it will fail. You, that is a read only. You have Data Store 1, that is your storage area. That's where your Windows 10 uh, VM is stored as well. So you'll see it's taking up, your Windows 10 VM is taking up some of your capacity already. At this point, we need to modify the settings a little bit. Uh, remember, it's very important to change the hard drive to thin provisioning. So click this little carrot over here, this little expander, and make sure you select thin provisioned. I also like to make the hard drive a little bigger. I'm gonna make mine 40 gigs. Remember with thin provisioning, it's only going to use what it actually uses. So even though I've called it 40 gigs, say the installation's only five gigs, it will actually only use five gigs of my hard drive. That's the beautiful thing about thin provision. Thick provision will use all the space that you uh, designate in that, in that thing. And notice I only have 65 gigs. So make sure it's thin provisioned or you'll use your space up quick. I'm gonna go ahead and give this two CPUs just for speed. And I'm gonna bump up the RAM to four gigs. That should make a really nice running server with two CPUs, four gigs of RAM. Very good for a uh, server that's not running a GUI as this one is intended to be. Now we scroll down here. I'm going to have to put a CD-ROM in the CD-ROM device. Make sure it shows connect there. It's already checkboxed. And I change it from host device to data store ISO file. An ISO file is just the contents of a CD DVD. That'll be in our ISO library. So select ISO library in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.3. And you'll see it's the only thing in there. I have removed that boot one that I put up as a test earlier in the week. This is the full nine gig ISO. You'll see it's 8.82 gigs. Go ahead and select that. And now that's virtually loaded in that CD-ROM tray. And we can go ahead and click next. This just gives you a, a kind of a um, readout of what you already selected. So you can look at that before you actually hit finish. And now it has created my server. Now, remember we haven't installed an operating system. What a hypervisor does, what ESXi does, is just create virtual hardware. So we've literally created a virtual physical server. So we've created a motherboard, RAM, CPU, that kind of stuff, hard drive. What we haven't done is installed the operating system. For that, we go ahead and click on our server and we're gonna power it on. 
And now when it powers on, it should find that virtual CD we stuck in there. And you can see when I pop this open, I'm going to go ahead and move to install Red Hat Enterprise 8.3. So it found the CD. It's just going to take a few minutes to boot up. Your server is actually booting right now using that CD. And it's going to take us into a step-by-step -step installer. So we'll go ahead and choose English here. Okay, and this is one where you really want to pay attention. You're going to have to go through several of these items here for your installation to be successful. The first thing, and it's counterintuitive, I think it would make sense if these were in the order you do them, but they're not. You want to start with where it's being installed. So we choose over here and there's only one option. It's that virtual hard drive that we created earlier right here. Remember that 40 gig thin provisioned hard drive. So I just have to select it by clicking on it. So um, you just click on it. Uh, sometimes you have to click twice for it to kind of come up like this. You have the option to do custom partitioning. Otherwise it will automatically partition it for you. Right now we're going to go ahead and just do automatic partitioning. So we'll say done here. You'll notice the warning has disappeared there. The next thing I want to set up is my networking so that this can get connected to the network. Go ahead and turn on networking and then I'm going to need to configure it. And what I'm going to do is change the networking for IPv4. So click over to IPv4 settings and we're going to change it from automatic DHCP to manual. Now we're going to have to add some manual settings. So we'll give it an IP address and that has to be in your subnet. My subnet is 1082.23. So I'll call this server .25. So my server IP will be 1082.23, which is my subnet. And then .25 will be the server. Remember not to use numbers below 25 because there's some devices down there. Uh, the gateway, you can put this in either as 255.255.255.0, or you could just put slash 24. It takes it either way. And then the gateway is dot one. So it's going to be your same subnet. Again, for me, it's 1082.23, and that would then be dot one. So that is now in there, and now I need a DNS server. For right now, we're going to use 8888, which is Google. Later in class, we'll be building our own DNS server, so we'll actually be pointing things to, to our own server. But right now, let's go ahead and just use Google's DNS server, and then you just go ahead and hit save here. And it should um, let me now turn the network back on, and I verify that those settings are sitting here. And yes, that's the dot .25 and the dot one gateway and the 8888. DNS. So if that all looks good, you go ahead and click done. Now we're back up. The next thing to go to is going to be software selection. And we want to select a minimal install. Do not select any of the additional software, just minimal install. Remember, we're going to be manually adding whatever software we want using the YUM or DNF um, software management tool later. So we just want the bare minimum of a server OS. So with that chosen, the last thing we really need to do in this upper part is the time zone. Notice it's in New York time. We want to go ahead and move that over to the West Coast. And that's all we really have to do because network time is turned on. Network time means it's going to, if we tell it the time zone, it's automatically going to pull the right time and date for us. That's only assuming your network works, right? So that's why we set up the networking first. If we chose not to set up networking at this time, we would have to skip um, doing automatic time and date. We'd have to have done that manually. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do in yours is click this connect to Red Hat and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and register your, um, your Red Hat Linux at this point. So you would click there and use that username and password that you created when you signed up for the free Red Hat developer account. Details on doing that, there's a link in our course shell on how to get your free Red Hat developer account. That entitles you to run up to 16 of these servers for free. So we're going to just run one or perhaps two during this class. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, set that up. That's going to be important to you later for getting certain software that's not uh, publicly available. It's only available if you have a, um, a licensed copy. 
I'm going to skip that for now, but you would just click there and put in that username password. Down here in the root password, this is just a made up password that you make up. I'm just going to do intech lowercase. I just want something nice and simple. Notice it says it's too short. I can override that by clicking done twice and it will go ahead and accept it anyways. If you want to create a user right now, you can. I'll create a user called Dwight, all right? And I'm going to make this user administrator. That means they'll be able to use this sudo command to do things. And Dwight's going to need a password. I'll make it my last name, Hughes. All right, and I'll go ahead and hit done twice because it didn't like that password either. So now I've created the root password, which is required for the root user. And it's optional, but it's fun to just go ahead and make yourself a user account now. Remember, you already learned how to make user accounts with the user add command, so you could easily make them later post installation. We go ahead and hit begin installation, and this process will take about five minutes. Great, looks like we've got it installed and we're ready to reboot the system and log in. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and test our login. I'll try the root one. Great. So once we're logged in as root or otherwise known as super user, the one task we wanna do right now is update the packages because they came off that DVD or ISO file. And as DVDs or ISO files are, they were created some time ago and they, there are updates available live online. So we can go ahead and, and we can do our DNF. And for me, it failed because I'm not, uh, I didn't set up my account. So this is not, uh, if you put in your username and password, you would, um, you would be able to, you would be able to run that update. So once you've done the update, we go ahead and usually just shut it down, shut down now. And so that'll, they'll just shut your system off for you. Um, alternatively, you could use the power on and off buttons up here. So a couple things that we want to do now to kind of uh, housekeeping, we want to add a note. Okay, the reason we're doing this is so that when we forget those usernames, they'll be right here for us, right on the control panel that we boot up our VM. So if we ever need to refer back here, you can put other notes in here as well about your VM. This is uh, probably not a very secure practice to do this. This is something you'd only do in a classroom or lab situation. Uh, the thing is that if you forget these passwords, especially the root password, you could be entirely locked out of your system. What we wanna do in, in the final bit here, uh, now that we've run the updates and we've put these notes in, is we're gonna take a snapshot so we have a place to go back. So we click on take snapshot. I'm gonna call mine. Freshly installed, just finished installing Linux, all right. And so we just go ahead and take that snapshot, done. So now we have a go back point. If you ever need to, you can just go under the actions, snapshots, revert to snapshot or restore snapshot. And what that will do is take you right back to this point we're at right here. So you can safely go ahead and try an experiment. You can mess things up and you know you can always snap back to that snapshot. So I encourage you to take snapshots as you go along um, in this class so that you have go back points. That concludes our tutorial, thank you.